everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I was working today on a miniature, actually I've been working the past few days on a miniature, and I videotaped every single part of it. So I thought I'd make a video showing you from scratch to finish how I put this miniature together. I'm calling it not a tutorial because you probably won't be able to follow along with it, it's just kind of a how I put it together. Um, so, start with something, this is mat board. So really, genuinely, from scratch, and then I created this piece of furniture. This is a custom order, and she wanted this bluish gray color. So I have these. So these are patterns I've done before. I use Cameo files with a silhouette Cameo. It's kind of like a Cricut, and they're files of my own design, so everything is original by me handmade yes my machine does help me cut it out so that everything's consistent but everything is original and designed by me so anyway i hope you enjoy the video i'm going to try and talk along with it so you know what i'm doing and i'll also put the link to my etsy store if you're interested in looking at some of my items i have for sale thanks this is the silhouette cameo and right now i'm just loading in a piece of cardstock and this is cutting out some of the little details for the cabinet. Um, the program that I use with this comes with the Silhouette Cameo machine and I just design, I draw out, design, measure, and then I put the measurements into this program for the Silhouette Cameo and it's really great because it will save it. It takes a lot of time but um, I don't have to re-measure and recut it just it does everything for me so right now I'm using a pin and instead of a blade in my machine and it's actually drawing the um, pieces that I need to cut onto the mat board and I do this instead of having it cut it out because the mat board I use is really thick to make my furniture last for a while and so it's it doesn't cut it all that well and I end up having to cut it myself anyway so using the pin there you can see the markings. Using the pen makes it so much easier. And then I just use an X-Acto knife to cut it out. So right now I'm, I'm kind of recutting. I need to change my blade. I'm cutting out some of the pieces that the Cameo cut out. And I'm using that, the thing in my hand is a spatula. It's just pulling the pieces off the sticky part of the board. And um, I'm just pulling those off one at a time. And those will, that it really helps me just make some really clean, nice cuts for those tiny details. Here's the mat board, and I'm cutting on the pieces on the lines that it created, and I'm just using my regular X-Acto knife, cutting out the pieces, and each piece before I cut it out, I put a letter on it, and I can go back to my original drawing because I've lettered all the different parts of the furniture, and the letters help me make sure that each piece gets into its own spot. And since I've made this piece before, you'll see it on my table a couple times, I just put it out there so I could measure the pieces against it and make sure everything's going in the right spot. So here we are going into the assembly. So I'm just getting out all my pieces and checking to make sure that everything is there. And um, I'm using tacky glue to put it all together. And so just a piece at a time, I go slow, make sure everything's lined up, especially the base pieces. You wanna make sure everything's in alignment, everything's where you want it to be, so that as you build upwards, nothing starts slanting or being tilted. Now I'm building the front and the back part of the cabinet. This um, dresser doesn't have opening drawers or doors. I would like to add that into my design. Uh, when I was first playing with the program and I put this dresser together, I really wasn't familiar with it enough to make drawers that open. And so I'm going to be doing that in the future. But right now it's just gonna be a flat cabinet front that I'm gonna be adding pieces onto to make it look like drawers and a door. But for right now they don't open. I'm 
putting on the top of the, I guess it's like a landing. There's this like little insert piece that goes in there. You can put items on and um, there's a smaller piece on the bottom and then a larger piece on top and that's to kind of give it a tiered look. And then the same for the top piece I'm putting together right now. Um, there's three tiers to it and so it's just going to kind of make the top of it look like it has like molding on the top. And now I'm using a Dremel and a drill to drill some holes and this will be where I put the rods that hold up um, that side of the cabinet. Here you can see me gluing on the very top piece and I'm going to be lining that up so that I can make sure that when the rods go in that they are going to stand um, vertically perfectly. I don't want them to slant over or not be straight. And also I'm drilling the holes for the feet to the cabinet and you'll see me make those soon. Oh yeah, here they go. Um, I use Q-tips and make sure if you're trying to do something similar to this, you get the Q-tips that have the paper in the center. You can get Q-tips that have plastic and they just don't work as well. They don't glue as well. Um, also, if you want to do something where you have to bend the Q-tips, um, it's not as easy with the plastic. And so I really use these paper Q-tips for a lot of different things. And um, I just scraped the cotton off the end and then cut them to size and made sure they fit in the holes that I had drilled with my Dremel. So now I'm cutting up pieces from cardstock and they're like really elongated triangles. And the reason I do that is so when I roll it around the Q-tip, it's going to make this really, let's see, how, how can I explain it? Uh, you'll see it. It kind of makes a slanted V or something. Um, and so that helps make kind of a curvy foot for the um, dresser. And then I just, I did them on the same Q-tip and then just cut them apart. So now you can see me gluing them in there. So the next pieces that I'm cutting out of cardstock are going to be for the rods that go on the top that hold up the top of the dresser. And it's going to have a little bit different look, but uh, I'm going to start with rolling that large triangle in the center. And as it gets more towards the center, it's going to get smaller and smaller and it's going to make this um, curvy looking design on the Q-tip. And you'll be able to see that a little bit better in a second. And I'll do that for both rods so that they match and then put them into the cabinet. You can see I'm testing, make sure it works. You can see the center part is um, built up because of that elongated triangle. Now I'm gluing them in, make sure that they're parallel and everything is the way I want it to be. This is a little center shelf and it is not cut perfectly because I do the rods differently each time. They have a different design. So I just kind of cut that shelf to fit as I see fit. Right now I'm putting on the drawer front fronts and making sure that they fit well. I'm sanding down the sides so that the sides are more curved and because if they were flat and I left them just how I had cut them out, there would be no definition between the different fronts of the drawers. And I'm also doing the same thing to the door. So now I've found a piece of plastic. You can use like um, transparency or um, just like the piece of plastic on the that comes on a toy like the plastic on the front of a box that was part of a toy and I'm cutting it out to the shape that I want the mirror on the front of the dresser to be and I'm going to use gray and black to kind of put down a color for the background of the mirror because if you just put straight silver um, it's not going to work really well you have to put gray behind the silver and so um, now I'm going to put some silver I'm putting silver on the mirror the plastic part and then I'm also going to put some big globs of silver onto the gray that I painted and I'm just going to smush it around. This is going to make the effect of an old timey mirror that needs to be refinished. Okay, so while you weren't looking I painted the inside of that oval black um, and now I'm just gluing it down on top of the mirror and that's going to hold it in place. 
and I'm gluing down the drawer fronts. And you'll see the pieces that I had cut out of the cardstock that the Cameo had cut, and then I just kind of recut out with my X Acto. I'm gluing those down to make a little bit more detail on the front of the drawers. And then there's also a piece that goes around the mirror. You'll see it's kind of white, you'll see it on top of the black. And it just kind of gives a, a little extra detail and a better edge to the mirror, Looks it, makes it look more finished. I also have these trim pieces for the sides of the dresser. So when you use the paper method of curling the paper around the Q-tip, it can look very bumpy like you see the edges of the paper so I take wood filler and I just kind of lather it over the top of the paper edges and it smooths it out it makes it more curvy like it would have been carved out of wood and right now I'm just using my fingers and I'm doing that the same thing for the feet of the dresser because um, it's just easier they're so small it's easier to use my fingers and then I'm just taking sandpaper and sanding the entire thing down it's going to be, um, it's just going to make a look more distressed in the end because that's the look I'm going for and it's going to help um, smooth down some of those edges from the wood filler. So now I'm using brown and I'm going to be doing this undercoat for the dresser. It's not going to be a brown dresser, but because I'm distressing the paint, you're going to be able to see some of underneath some of the paint. Um, I want to start with brown and that's going to be because if this was an actual piece of furniture it would probably be made out of wood and so if some of the paint was falling off you would see brown underneath the paint. And um, I'm only showing you one coat but I actually do a couple coats and this is so when I distress the paint on top and I decide to sand it I don't want to sand through a really thin coat of brown paint. I want to be able to see that brown and um, because if I get all the way down to the white, that's not really going to make sense. You want to see the brown. This is a crackle medium and you want to use that after the brown coat and then before the final coat. And what this does is it just really dries out the top coat incredibly fast and so it makes the top coat of paint um, contract, I think that's the word contract, so that it starts cracking and you can see all the little cracks in between. So I'm not going to show you me putting crackle over the entire um, dresser but I have to wait for it to dry for a little bit. Okay so here's my special color paint that I mixed up and I'm going really slow. I am brushing it on in the direction that I want it to crack and I'm just being really particular about it. This is the fun part. This is the distressing part that I love and I'm sorry you don't get to see all of it or see a lot of my techniques but um, you just have to work really quickly. You can only really put down paint one time and then I'm not going to paint the whole thing because I only have a little window of time to kind of, see I'm using a metal tool there and I'm just kind of working with the paint, scratching it off in different places so that it looks really old and antiqued. There's the finished after I've gone over the whole thing and uh, ready to start with the handles. So the handles were also cut out by the Cameo and this helps me keep them really small, really delicate and also really well cut. If I had to do it by hand it, I would just, it would drive me insane. So I do two layers of um, cardstock for those and then I do a base layer of gray paint. This will help the silver paint. Since I want them to be silver, it'll help the silver show up. And there's I'm doing the, the top part of the silver paint. Zoomed in so you can see it a little bit better. 
And then I'm taking some really, really watered down brown paint and this is to help give some age to the silver. Okay, almost done, last step. I'm adding these little bitty handles on and so I just kind of shape them how I want them to look and put the glue on real carefully so I don't have a big glue glob on top of my paint and I just stick them down where they need to go and that's about it. Make sure I get the hinges on there so it looks like the door opens. And that is the end of this project.